Hey, it's Larry here, Xboxes. Major Nelson over there with Jeff. Jeff, how are you? My box, it's bigger. Well, it's and yet it's, it feels lonely. Well, let's be clear. Um, normally we're like this, but as you <laughs> yes. can see, we don't have a third here because Rebecca is not with us today. So Jeff and I, we we, we had a couple folks who were trying to get in here, but schedules were just kind of crazy. So um, she's on a well-deserved vacation as well. well and, Lunar, remember, she talked about it last year, the Lunar New Year. Yeah. So yes. Um, um, but the good news is, yeah, we, we we make up for that next week. We do. Hey, I was going to save that for the end of the show, but I, I guess I'll bring this it is right why I don't the run the show. I'll bring I it right to the top the of the show. I spoil all the episodes. We're doing Sorry. on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, which is what's the day? What's the what's the day of the week on Tuesday? It's uh, Tuesday that is the eighth. Yeah, yes, Tuesday, February eighth or eight February for those of you not in the United States. Uh, we are going to do the show live we're gonna do the show live for the first this is actually this is this is actually epic for the first time ever rebecca larry and jeff will be in the same place at the same time we've never done this show jeff and i have done it you know in the same place at the same time and i've been with rebecca without jeff but we've never all been at the same time at the same place in the same so we're gonna do that next um Next, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we'll be streaming on my channel on on Twitch and also probably on YouTube. We'll also be on the Xbox channel because we, we're going to be leading into who's streaming that day, Jeff. Yeah, that will be. Oh, has that been revealed yet? I don't want to take oh. it away, but we have a great we have, uh, we have a great streamer uh, who's going to be joining for our Black History Month uh, Creator Takeover. Yep. That'll be the second week. Uh, we've had some great folks on this week as well. And uh, I don't want to ruin the announcement if he hasn't announced yet, okay. but it yeah, is uh, somebody somebody that should be familiar. Someone you might be surprised to see on an Xbox channel. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. You've piqued my interest. Mm. But anyway, we'll do that on Tuesday. And don't worry about it. If, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Spotify or any of the other places, then I'll just take this and I'll upload it like I normally do. So don't worry about it. If you're if you don't if you like, oh, I missed it. And, or am I gonna, how am I going to see? Don't worry about it. We got you covered. We're there gonna, may just be some more visual gags. We may play something live. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll have, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. But I'm looking forward to having you and Rebecca in the same place at the same time. So that's that's actually, like I say, the it, first It's so – I mean, we, we've more or less gotten used to doing the show this way. But yeah. there's so much in terms of like a, converse, a conversation when you're in person. You can see in their eyes. You can see with their body language that they want to say something or they disagree. And your timing is just so tight. And because yeah. – our voices need to go like all the way out to New York and then come all the way back. And then all the way back again sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like, like uh, you know, there's always a thing where, all right, I'm going to count to like three before I talk because I don't want to talk over Rebecca. I wait till three. I start talking and inevitably I t we talk at the same time. It happens well, every time. It's kind of like old school when I used to do um, broadcast interviews on news and they would use satellite. And it was the same thing. It was a satellite. It would have to go all the, you know, 22,500 miles up, bounce off, come down. It was, it's, it was difficult. But we're not going to have that problem next week, are we? No, no, because, uh, you know, we're not going to be constrained by, you know, stupid physics and the speed of light, which is, by the way, not getting any faster, not helpful. Like, where's the where's the evolution here? Where's the work? Put in the work. Don't be a constant. We need we need warp drive. Oh, well, that'd be good. Quantum. Way, you quant imagine if we had quantum podcast, probably the the least valuable use of, of quantum computing would be applying it to the podcast. Well, but you, I want to do it. I want to be the world's first quantum could, powered could, podcast. I, I need to tell this story because I'm sure you know this, Jeff, but for the listeners, they don't. We actually have a whole team of people at Microsoft that work in quantum computing. I have no idea what they do. <laughs> I have no idea. What, I mean, I'm like, it's like, it's like, I mean, I consider myself a nerd and I know, Jeff, you've got nerd tendencies, but this is, this is like on a completely different level. Like, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even want to walk into that classroom. I, won't I tried learning on. a little bit about it and how it works. And it's like, if a particle moves, then it's got another particle somewhere else in the galaxy and it will move at the same. I, I'm like, how, what? Like, it doesn't, this is beyond me. Which is thank you for, thank you. In like English. Thank yeah. you for tuning into the, uh, this is the science podcast. You didn't know what you got yourselves into. Hey, you know what I found this, out today? Yeah. We are the only video game news and information video show on Spotify. You know, I've been talking for a few weeks about how we're on Spotify with video. We are the only video game news and information. There's, I think there's one other review show, but they don't do news and information. And we only do information, not misinformation. That's not what we do. Well, no, no. If you, we tell you it, it's true. <laughs> 
unless it's about quantum computing, <laughs> in which case we will lead with, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But anyway, an expert on. good to see you, Jeff. It's uh, should we talk about what we're playing? We've got a, a nice interview this week about dying light Two. I've got some, I've got Ooh. some props here to show off. Have you started playing that? That's, that's definitely next on my list. Um, I have it. I think I have it downloaded, but I have. Obviously I did. It's out. It's out now. For those of you that don't yeah. know, you know, it's out this week. Um, I started playing it because we are recording this just after it released, so I haven't had a chance to get like three or five or six hours, and I think I'm maybe forty five minutes in, to be honest with you. And I wanted to at least play it because I'm doing the interview later on, so we'll, uh, we'll 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 kick that off in just a minute. But um, yeah, I'm playing that, and of course, you and I are playing our playing playing our nightly Halo. Nightly Halos. Yeah. yeah. Jeff says, it's "Halo, nice that- B- 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 BRT. You know, you text yeah. me, and I'll be right there." So we go in and we yeah, play a little I, yeah, bit. kind of have that thing where it's like I see who's on. If no one's on playing, then I'll play something else. But we've we've we definitely have a nice little routine here that we haven't had for a long time. Yeah, I feel I, like probably not since we were you know when Apex first came out, and we were actually that Apex. I wouldn't say phase, but we we were every day playing actually the new apex stuff that is coming out next week looks really cool well that was the funny story is you, you and i were playing halo and your daughter was in the same room last night playing apex so it was you guys yep. guys i don't know how you're doing that a lot a lot of by the way lot. yeah i was fine with it you all were kind of like you know playing off of the things she was saying every time i open my mouth and i was talking lower than normal i was yeah, like you were you were top top mid uh, top, he's, top got, he's got he's got he's got yeah. rocks you know yeah. Yeah. and every time no matter how low she would just glare at me like i'm really very much embarrassing her by being alive in the same and in the same room as her so well, we've got a great relationship it's fine. no i mean normally we do but you can tell when there's friends involved she can't mute fast enough right because god knows what i'll do so i i, I'm, I actually I, I had to tell you i'm a little disappointed i have not heard you bust out the too many dad jokes uh, here in the, I, there's a lot of puns, like, like, like the, gr- the groanier it is, like the more my, my wife and my daughter will think it's funny. They will say it's stupid, but then they're falling on the ground laughing. So I the see. more situational things, I see. and I'll just come up with the dumbest thing. But, um, I, I, now our dad joke expert, like our, the person who's got like, who could write a book of dad jokes is, is Rebecca and she's not here today. Which so. is so funny because she's not a dad. But she she has the she dad. Has a dad. She, she, she she's I, got a great relationship with her dad. Yeah, if I have a relationship as good with my daughter as Rebecca does with her dad, when you know uh, when my daughter is the same age, then uh, I'll have done something right. Yeah. Well, I'm Meanwhile, hoping. I'm too busy embarrassing her on stream. I'm getting a little bit of that out now with my four year old. She's like, dad, <laughs> you know, I'm getting a little bit. You've seen a little yeah. bit of that when we come over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just wait. Exactly. Just wait. Hey, speaking of, All right, so uh, we, I mean, what were you playing? What well, else are you playing? I mean, I, I well, it's been. What else? I'm playing Dying Light. I'm playing in the mic, Larry. In the I'm mic. sorry. No, I was I was turning around looking at because I was getting my gloves ready. Ooh. Um, playing Rainbow Six Extraction. We played that a little bit. We talked about that last week. In fact, next week, um, hopefully after a little bit, either during or towards the end of the stream, we're going to play Rainbow Six Extraction for folks uh, that tune in on the Tuesday live show. Wow, we're just going to really stink it up uh, live. You know so what? Why not? We'll, we why not? Why not? Why not? We're not scared. We're not scared to fail. But I'm playing. I, I ever I haven't had a lot of chance to play too much. I've been really busy with some work stuff and some other projects. Um, working on a real nerdy. I told you the nerdy project I'm working on for my car. You right? Did. But, it yeah. had a Raspberry Pi involved, and that's when I just tuned yeah. out. Right. Come on, you could do it, some fun. It stuff. was clever. All right, you want to you want to tell people what you're working on. Well, we can do that at the end of the show. I mean, should, should I, I do it at the end of the show? The so tech it's, section it's, is he going to be back on the show? He could be. He's he's dying to get back on. Uh, no, I have a, I have a Tesla, and there's this uh, there's a GitHub with Tesla USB, which basically takes all the footage and copies it to the Raspberry Pi, and then when you pull into your garage, it it copies it over to my server. So that's it. Very clever. Very yeah. clever. Speaking of E, yeah, uh, I picked up the new Pokemon, Pokemon Legends Arceus Arceus. Um, is that what you're playing? Turns out it's great. I am playing that. I'm playing okay. a lot of stuff. I, I Knowing that I was going to get into Dying Light 2, and I actually finished after six months, I finished Octopath Traveler. Phenomenal game. If you love an old school RPG, it's on Game Pass. Get it. I, I just, I can't recommend it highly enough. It is just like the way you remember, you know, classic Final Fantasies being like Super Nintendo era. Just right. like, um, it's just, it's very good. It's, and I, I miss it. When you, you know, a game is great when you're done, you spend a lot of time with it. And then, you go to sit down, you know, to play something, and then you're like, oh, wait, 
that came off of like, there's like a, almost a sense of loss. Yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah, I could go and I could grind, you know, the rest of the achievements, but um, that happened to me with breath of the wild. Yeah, no, totally get it. And yeah, because we we both played that for over a year before we beat it. We just we just kept going and grinding and having it, it was it, it. You know what? It never felt like grinding. <laughs> no, <laughs> and you know what? It was one of those things. You, I was almost saving it a little bit. You know, yeah. um, I mostly played it when I was on the go, and then when I finally beat it, I was, yeah, there was that sense of that's loss. right. Because we were and traveling. Actually, there's, we were traveling yeah. a lot. So you mentioned Breath of the Wild, and and I've seen this new Pokemon game. Um, sort of like compared to Breath of the Wild, it is it is largely open world, a lot more than if you played Sword and Shield, which was also really good. Um, this But this game is like instantly capturing me because it's one, not like the same thing. Is that the one yes. that got taken down or was it Pikachu FPS? Did you see that? Yes, that <laughs> that's because that's not a licensed game. So I guess it's I know, but I know. that that happened. Yes, I, I, I did read about a game where you can shoot Pokemon and I don't, I don't, I don't approve, although I did watch the video. Uh, but yes, the, uh, I would say if you, 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 maybe you grew up playing Pokemon games. I've been playing since red and blue and they're all like the mainline ones. They're all kind of the same. You would, you would, you would be like a child leaving town and, uh, you would, you know, you'd wake up in your bedroom and you would have like a Nintendo on the, uh, you know, in your room. Uh, and then you would just leave and you would try to hunt and the professor would help you out. This is completely, a completely different type of game. Right. And um, I, I I think it's really cool, like what they've done with it. Like you're back in time and you're, you know, people are afraid of Pokemon and and you're sort of like figuring it out. And it's almost like a, a stealth action game at times, but yeah. you're still doing battling. I, don't, I think they found, read the reviews, don't take it from me. Uh, but if any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, if you liked the classic RPG styles and you want to play more of that, by all means, I think this is something that you might be, you might be into. All right. I'll, I'll check it out. I mean, I don't really play yeah. Pokemon that much, but I'll take a look at it. To support I, yeah, I don't know if it's for you per se, but I think, uh, uh, it's for me. Uh, okay. I guess I'll put it that That's, all, that's yeah. all that matters. We've got so, a, something that might be for you that I tried out. Again, yes. knowing that, that dying light was coming out, I didn't want to start another big 80 hour game except for Pokemon because- I had FOMO. But uh, I, t- I ended up trying a lot of uh, smaller games over the weekend that were worth talking about. So one, a game that came to Game Pass, the the, the Taiko Drum game, yep. Taiko no Tatsujin. We talked about the Drum Master. We talked about it a little bit. Um, How it's do you totally do the drumming? Like, all right. So there's basically like uh, A, or you can program it however you want, but like A is like the main drum. Oh, and so it's just all button based. B will be like the other one. It's, it's basically... Like playing rock band, but you're using a controller. I, I, I do need to look into it. I think if there was a drum controller, that'd be something else. But it's just so different. Wait that, a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a lot of pleasant noises. I had fun playing it for a half hour. Wait a minute. Could you turn this into a drum controller? <laughs> I think you could. You <laughs> the, absolutely could. The adaptive controller. It looks like a drum pad, right? I, I can I borrow that one because I want to try that out. That could complete. Larry, you're a genius. You're a genius. Trying to help. Uh, trying that could to help be really here. interesting. Now I'm, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try because yeah. that's that that's wireless, so I'm going to check that out. Okay. Give well, there you go. Try. It's uh, yeah. So uh, the Drum Master is in uh, Game Pass, and so you could try it out. The other one was a game I had mentioned briefly last week, um, a tactical game uh, made in Brazil, and I wanted to try it out because one, I love tactics games, and two, I don't know if I had ever played a game made in Brazil before. So let's let's I think see what we it have. is. And, go ahead. I, I couldn't name it off the uh, off the top of my. Uh, there's a huge gaming community in in Brazil. Um, I speak to our our um, our teammates in Sao Paulo pretty pretty frequently, actually. But I didn't know if I. Anyway, uh, so Reverie Knights Tactics is the game, and if you like tactics games, it's pretty. Um, try it's almost like Vandal Hearts esque. Uh, maybe not as much. I, anyway, it, it's a, a pretty detailed. Uh, tactics game with like some interesting like high find and hunt. It's also super challenging. Um, I played it a little bit recklessly. And have uh, you been to Brazil? Uh, to pay for it. So I have a visa for Brazil. Yes, I do too. I've never used you and I have visas for Brazil for the same reason, right? Because we were supposed to go to Brazil Game Show many years 2014, ago, 2015, yeah, 15, 2015. I can't yeah. remember. And the visa came in too late, and so we couldn't get on the plane. Came and the day, it, it came the day showing, after we were supposed to leave, right? The day after we were supposed to go, and I'm still, I'm still upset about it. Yeah. So we need to get down there somehow, somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know what they love down there in Brazil? 
I don't know what you're going to say here, Larry, X-Cloud. but trick carefully. X-Cloud. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> They love xCloud. I mean, everybody loves xCloud, but wow, I just saw some Brazilian numbers and they was like, whoa, big. So that's awesome. Good stuff there. Uh, oh boy. Anyway, so what that's do you do? Do you want to do interviews? You want to do the news? Uh, like, t- tell me what's on your mind. You know what? Let's, why don't we just go ahead and do the news and then we'll end it with the interviews. You know what? We're going to mix it up this week. We're going to do something completely different. We're going to keep the show going. Uh, we'll do some news, but before we do that, I have some, you know, Oh, yes, please. And full screen, is, Larry, please. This is not necessarily news per se, Jeff, but let me let me get myself full screen here. Stand by. Um, but I got. <laughs> oh, you've got the OPI. I've got yes. all of the nail lacquers, uh, which here's the these are available. We did a partnership with OPI. This one is for uh, Forza. Yes. So, so this yes. is, and you can't, the, the, the one over here is racing for pinks. And this one over here is trading paint. So each one of these comes with, um, comes with, uh, some, like, for instance, you can get a code that'll get in Forza will give you a skin in Forza. And then this is the one for halo. It matches uh, those colors, which yeah. is, which really cool. So yep. this one, this one is actually pretty kind of cool as well. So achievement unlocked can't control me. Um, trading paint pixel dust uh, so there's a whole bunch here and they have a code inside so we're doing this great partnership with opi i mean this is kind of there's some, there are, there's some people i mean men women they, they like they like them their nail colors like i've never seen you with a uh with a um trading paint color well, look, on jeff i have a I, I have a daughter and yours is as she gets older and you let her paint her nails she will ask to paint your nails and i let her uh what i found and i don't know why it made, I felt like maybe it was mental, but I was like, my hands feel warm after after having my. But oh, well, I, I these are better have, colors than an, we had. I do have an embarrassing story actually to tell. I'm actually looking for because there's actually something really cool about this that I want to tell you about. Well, your inbox is on the show. You might want to move. I know, no, no, no. I just I'm, I was actually my my. That's what I'm looking for right now. There's uh, there's some interesting details about the um, about the. Uh, they're going to do a stream next week. This OPI group is going to do a stream. Um, and then I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that on Thursday, February 15th at 3 PM Pacific, that's six o'clock Eastern. Um, they're going to have a few appearance by some of OPI's nail artists to discuss mm-hmm. how they came up with the nail designs for the campaign. They're going to give away a few of the custom controllers and, oh, <laughs> somebody that we know is going to be hosting and playing. That would be Malik. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Malik on my team. And he's going to get his nails. He's going to get his nails painted for us. Uh, hold that box back up because then you could see there is a halo. Oh, I thought it was, maybe it's not on there, but one of them does have a code. That one is for Forza. And I think that one includes a code for um, a multiplayer skin, yep. like a, a, a special color that's only available. Um, I think it is the, you had me at halo or it's the yep. achievement unlocked one of those two colors, but it looks like a really cool skin and I want it. Yeah, they're going to do this. So this this stream will be next uh, February fifteenth. So right right after Valentine's Day, which is coming up. Did you did you order your chocolate and your flowers, Jeffrey, for your? No. Here's the thing about Valentine's Day, is never are cliche things like chocolates and flowers, flowers more expensive, and never are they effectively worth less. Like if I give my wife flowers on Valentine's Day, she's going to be like, oh well, it's Valentine's Day. So that you know what you know what the best time to give flowers. The day after. It, 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 I, well, no, because then they're clearly a day old. You know, uh, you know, July July 19th. That's a great day for me to s- yep. send flowers to my wife. Just it's exa- like, what are these for? Exactly. Just because I Just love because, you. Just because I love you. Just because I love you. Um, but anyway, so yeah, tune into that stream at Twitch TV forward slash Xbox for all the OPI stuff. And I know I know. apparently we are now, we are not, you know, maybe we should, we're going to be fashion influencers, Jeff. Right? Let's do it. Uh, let me, let we- me get... I don't know. Let me, I don't know if that's really our jam, but we can certainly uh, want to, I just really wanted to call these out because it's so great to see uh, Xbox doing, we have a great brand team that does all sorts of stuff and collabs as they like to say. Um, they do. So, so I'm looking forward to seeing what else they got planned. But anyway, OPI stream coming up. Yeah. If you're looking where to get them, by the way, yeah. Um, I, I think Ulta is where you can get them. It's a, na- a nationwide uh, chain. So I think we have one in my neighborhood. So, um, I f- it feels like they're, yeah, they're, they're actually in the U S they're exclusively at Ulta beauty. Um, yep. uh, and that'll be until like March 31st. And then we also can get them on Amazon everywhere else around the world. You can get them, uh, on opi.com forward slash Xbox details for your regional market. So, all right, we're done with that part. Cool. <laughs> what else you got for news? 
Yeah. So we're into February. And and as I'm sure you know, February is Black History Month. Yes, it and is. And we celebrate at Xbox um, in a number of different ways. And we have a blog post up on Xbox Wire. Um, but the parts that uh, – there's two things I wanted to call out. One is – we talk about this actually pretty frequently on the show – is Microsoft Rewards. So we have three – uh, rewards are something that you will rack up as you're playing like a Game Pass game, for instance. Just playing games, doing what you're doing anyway. Every time you launch, like every single time I launched uh, Octobath Traveler, it would pop up. You just hold down the uh, the Xbox button, you cash in those points, and then now I've got I've got thousands. And so then what you do is you can go into uh, you can go into the hub and you can uh, for Microsoft Rewards, and then you can you can use them for all number of things. I recommend. For those who can, uh, who can spare it, to donate to uh, the relevant charities that we have up there, we cycle them out pretty frequently, and so we have uh, three different organizations supporting Black communities with Xbox this uh, this Black History Month. Uh, community, uh, Black Girls Rock, and Game Heads, um, and so uh, very good, highly vetted. Um, uh, organizations that we think do great work, and uh, I'll be donating to all three of them uh, definitely this month, and encourage you to play games, rack up some points, and do the same thing. All right. That the other thing good. I want to call out, and we mentioned it actually briefly, is that we're um, doing uh, once again our uh, creator takeovers, and so yes. we are sort of handing the stage over uh, to a number of creators from the Black community over the course of the next few weeks uh, to come on stream. We had uh, a friend of mine, King Phoenix, on. Uh, he was yesterday, so we're, we're taping this earlier in the week. And he had just a great stream playing Halo Infinite. He's a uh, really uh, very funny guy. And, uh, you know, the, the hope is that uh, we're helping creators uh, introduce them to uh, the Xbox channel audience, and and hopefully they find uh, uh, more people to follow and more people to support, more streamers but, to support. But I want to point out that it's it's not just you know you you don't go after we we do a lot. Your team does a lot of work with the larger streamers, but you kind of find the up and coming ones and kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, "Here you go, you are you're a kingmaker." I wouldn't go that <laughs> far, but what I would say is is we want to. Um, I would say our philosophy with creators in general is, yeah, you, we could go to just like, you know, Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tapman and Pokimane for everything. Um, uh, and and they're great creators um, and, and and we love them and we love what they do. But we, we see our role as really being able to ensure that opportunities access when we have events, you know, uh, that we can bring creators in that are up and coming and they're on the way up and give them those opportunities, give them access to, you know, games and to be able to create cool content. And that's, uh, I would say one of our missions really, yeah. uh, on our team. And so we'll be seeing some great folks this week, um, and more folks next week, including someone we'll be leading into. So we'll have to do a really good show next week. Uh, so we can give him a warm we don't, we don't, Xbox we don't set out to do a bad show. <laughs> No, it's but I mean like I know. we can just do a better. It'll be a live show, and I it'll, think be, it'll be it'll be it'll, and we'll all be together for the first time. And we've got some we've got a couple of surprises. I saw the email thread about that earlier, so I know we're working on some cool stuff, right? Yes. Yep. What, what else? So you a got lot there? more stuff. Okay, sure. Uh, very excited to see this uh, as we gear up for the baseball season. It's February, so uh, spring training starts. Uh, actually, start does it start February? More? I feel like it starts February, doesn't it? Uh, we're starting to talk baseball and happy to confirm that MLB The Show 22 uh, for the second year running will be uh, coming to Xbox and will be part of Xbox Game Pass. Second year uh, in a row. The amazing, yes, the amazing pitcher and hitter Shohei uh, Otani is going to be on the cover. This guy like does it all like in a way that like I don't feel like we've seen since. Like Bono's? You're, you're like... What? <laughs> like Bo Jackson? But, but even Bo, well, he was two sports. <laughs> right. And by the way, if you were born like, you know, in the 90s, you don't even know who he is. And that's Go fine. Look him up. He was incredibly famous, had had a sneaker and everything. But um uh like you have to go back to like the like the Babe Ruth days where you had people yeah. that would pitch and hit equally well. And <laughs> right, you didn't see that. And like Otani plays every day. Like he had 46 home runs last year 100 RBIs but also was a 9 and 2 record as a as a pitcher like like 
but that's that just crazy. doesn't ha- that doesn't happen anymore. And that's so it's crazy. Just, it's just kind of crazy. And so he's on the cover, uh, looks awesome, and um, you'll be able to play April fifth is when um, the game will be about on uh, Xbox Game Pass. And we'll so, have to get um, your friend on again. Yes, Ramon Russell. Ramon, so he wrote yeah. the blog post here. It was great to have him on last year. As I recall, we did that interview. I was on vacation in Hawaii, but Ramon's such great people that's right, that's that uh, right. I dialed in. Remember, I was sitting outside right. in a, like the Airbnb. I'm With like, the, my the palm feet are getting trees. bit up by whatever I was sitting on, but uh, and it was so hot. I was like, please wrap this up before I'm like sweating down my my forehead. But anyway. We'll get um, Ramon on again. He's he's uh, yeah. he's officially a friend of the show now, so we're going to get him back on, and it's great to see RBI come on. Friend. Speaking of RBI, just I mean, it's unrelated yet related. Uh, what about that uh, that that news with uh, we got some news this week with uh, Sony and Bungie? That's a, that's some that's some interesting stuff. Yep, <laughs> that's all we can say. Just because I wanted to say because you know people down below in the comments are going to go, I can't believe they didn't talk about it. That's all we can say because we don't know anything. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I mean, congrats. I mean, we have lots yeah, of friends congrats. over at, at Bungie and Sony, so good for them. Yeah, and they have a they have a blog post talking up about you know on Bungie.net, I think about you know how they're thinking about things and yep. Uh, but I've got nothing to add, obviously. There, what I do have to add, yes, is uh, more games coming to Xbox Game Pass in addition to MLB, which will be coming in April. Some I things that are need out to now. Lubricate that segue a little week. better, but it worked. <laughs> Look. <laughs> You drove a car right through my Game Pass segment. <laughs> I did. So, I did. I'm sorry, but it was it was yeah. relevant because RBI. Okay, go ahead. It not RBI MLB MLB MLB. Anyway, uh, <sighs> so out now uh, some games uh, that that are hitting this week and also next week. So the ones this week they're already there. So contrast, contrast. Uh, if if you recall, um, that was that was the game before we Happy Few. Oh, that's right. Uh, from Compulsion. This Compulsion, was, I think, which is one of our studios. Uh, yeah, and they're now part of uh, now part of Xbox Game Studios. And uh, Contrast was their first game. Uh, it's available now. If you've never played it, uh, it's an ID at Xbox game available on Xbox Game Pass uh, for cloud and console. Uh, Dreamscaper, Telling Lies, which I think you had played Telling Lies. It's like re- real, like FMV. They used to call it like yeah, it's actual full motion video, actual video. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and also stars, I think her name. Oh, is I remember Angela her now. Serafian I remember you were telling from, me you were telling me who was yeah. in it. Yeah, now she I was in Westworld. That. Right, Westworld. Yeah, right. so you can see that picture. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this was from the creative her story, which was uh, critically acclaimed a few years back. Crossfire, uh, Crossfire X. Yeah, so looking into next week, Crossfire X will be available day one on Game Pass. So there's the single player uh, campaign as part of this. The multiplayer is, I believe, free to play. Uh, also, Edge of Eternity, which is a cool looking RPG. That total, uh, the, that to, for some reason, those Edge excited. of Eternity and Infernax and Skull look all you. Definitely Edge of Eternity. Skull is a roguelite uh, right. an action. So I'm just going to probably not be good at it. Uh, so that's Skull, the Hero Slayer. And then there's the Last Kids on Earth. And then on February 14th, Valentine's Day, nothing says, uh, you know, Let's 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 play a game together like Ark Ultimate Survival Edition. Uh, so this has this is the definitive was collection. The last time we played everything. that, like 2013 or 2014, back when it was in uh, Black in you, Game Preview, it was one of the first Game Preview games, as I yep. recall. Yep. And um, like it, we, we've talked about it multiple times. We were like banging rocks together, and then like six then months later, I'm watching someone fly on a t- on a pterodactyl with like dual wielding smgs or something like it was just like <laughs> ridiculous we were not playing the same game nope. we're, we're nope. we i think you froze to death and then it's yeah. because I, 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 I yeah we didn't have we didn't know how to make pants <laughs> we didn't know how Last to make game, trousers <laughs> uh, yes is uh infernax also available on february 14th uh it's about the adventures of a great knight who returns to his homeland yes. only to find it plagued by unholy magic yeah this is something i would play so you're See, right on with that. Told you, told you. Couple of big sales this week. Yes. Uh, first one is a sale from THQ Nordic. Uh, save up to eighty percent on titles including Bio Mutant, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, Re Reckoning, Dark Siders Three, SpongeBob, uh, Wreckfest, Destroy All Humans. Uh, THQ Nordic has a lot of great games, and if you haven't played them. The sale is going on and up to 80% off, depending on the game and the SKU, until February 7th, which is uh, the day before we go live, until Monday. Monday, Monday, yeah. Until Monday. And then uh, we also have Anime Month. 
Uh, so you can save up to 85% on select anime inspired games. This is definitely in my wheelhouse. Dragon Ball, Naruto, love- all of them. Yes, uh, Scarlet Nexus, which uh, I really enjoyed. One of my favorite games last year. Uh, Tales of Arise, Code Vein, Chris Tales. Um, and that goes until February 14th. And then there's going to be a second collection uh, in the second half of the year, of the month, rather. that goes through the end. So if you're interested, buy now. But then uh, keep an eye out for more, more games coming out uh, later. There'll also be... Not just the anime-inspired games, but the animes themselves. So things like One Piece, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, uh, the movies and TV part, that app on your computer uh, or on your Xbox, uh, those games are on sale as well. You can even get a gift card. If you spend $50 on any of this stuff, you get 5,000 Microsoft Rewards points, which you could use to donate to those charities, as mentioned earlier. You also get a $5 gift card. So that's like a 10% 10% off the top. Right? What about Game Pass members? We can't leave them out of the out of the fun. That's right, Larry. <laughs> what a segue. Game Pass is celebrating Anime Month with a collection of I had to pick 17 up for me screwing you off earlier. Anime <laughs> inspired games uh you can discover it, uh and you can earn up to 300 Microsoft reward points when you play uh or achieve quests. Uh Game Pass quests in games such as Near Automata, Become as Gods Edition, uh One Piece Warriors 4, and AI, the Somnium Files. Fantastic. So, play to win. Play to win. Two last bits of news. Uh, yeah, a couple of games time. that have, wow. Wow, Larry. What? Just giving some release dates. We're okay. sharing the news. We're sharing the news. Uh, Shadow Warrior 3, we have a date for that launching on March 1st. And then uh, Chernobylite, which is a game that's coming to uh, Series X and S uh, on April 21st. Uh, takes place apparently they they actually mapped the chernobyl exclusive exclusive zone i think it's called where, where you the can't exclusion go zone. basically exclusion zone thank you i knew there was a word for that so they actually mapped that like that's the map of the game and then there the, the game itself is like a um uh survival horror rpg but um this is the second but, chernobyl conversation we had today remember the one i where i brought it up earlier in the meeting earlier Did, were you there for that meeting I don't know if I was there for that. No, we were, we were talking about how <clears throat> I went into the office and it was like Priapet, which is the big town oh, right next that. to Chernobyl, yes. which, you know, yes. which is when Chernobyl melted down back in the eighties that it, um, that everybody had to evacuate immediately. And like there, there's yes. half, you know, the glasses are half filled. And well, that, that's where this takes place. Yes. So you're, you're, you're Igor, a physicist that worked at Chernobyl returning 30 years later to Pripyat to investigate the mysterious disappearance of his fiance. So it seems really interesting. Um, a $30 game. And that is coming out, uh, like I said, in uh, April, April 21st. Thank you for that. That there's the news. There you go. Do you have the chat window open over there? Just to make sure you have that open there so you can get us into the next segment. So, oh, yes. Okay. So, uh, well, well, yeah, in fact, you. We might, you know, we should probably wrap up the show here because we're going to just, like I said, we're going to get ready for the big live show next week with Rebecca. We'll, we'll all be in studio on Tuesday. And then, you know, if you want to join us live, we, you know, we may have some giveaways too, Jeff. I, I should hope that we do. So, we're going to end the show with a nice interview with the, the game that everyone is talking about this week, Dying Light 2. We are pleased to welcome uh, David uh, Lubroika the animation director from Dying Light 2, and Dying Light 2 is out now. One of the first big releases of 2022 is here, and it's now Dying Light 2 Stay Human is out now and available on Xbox and a bunch of other platforms. Joining me today is the animation director, uh, David Lubrica. David, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Thanks. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Uh, first of all, congratulations on launching the game. Always a great moment. I mean, this game, I remember seeing it a few years ago, and it was just so exciting to see the open world elements and the parkour. For those folks that, you know, let's refresh their memory a little bit that maybe aren't following along too closely uh, about Dying Light 2 and, you know, what what can we expect in the game? Right. So uh, the major thing that we want to uh, show you is the vast open world uh, that is uh, really really stretched out in verticality so it's not only playing in you know uh, huge horizontal stretches but it's also uh, uh, it, it allows you to climb buildings to jump between them uh, to use some tools like paraglider to jump from the building to another building or use some um, parkour helpers or just pure parkour skills uh, that 
throughout the game uh, will uh, allow you to uh, like become better and better in, in traversing, in parkouring. So let, let's just back up a little bit. This is a, an open world action role playing survival horror game. I think that's the best. Correct. Way to, I mean, I don't want to. I'll let you define your game. But <laughs> there's something you meant. You talked about the verticality. So would you say is it fair to say it's a platformer for gamers that know that term, or is it more? It's more complicated than that, isn't it? It's it's more complicated because uh, like uh, in platformer you. Uh, the the goal of the game is to like progress on kind of you know on this platform manner, but for us this is uh, the the um, the world is the place that we want to, you to explore. So you can uh, explore the city freely. Uh, you can go pretty much w whatever you see. You can go there. Uh, so uh, this is just the playground for you to um, to have your fun to like uh, define your your own uh, story, your own gameplay. There, so we've got a role playing game, and I know I remember you guys talked a little bit a few, a few weeks ago or a few months ago. There, there's quite a bit of gameplay in here, isn't there, in terms of the length of the game and so forth? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the story uh, itself, it's like uh, twenty plus hours, uh, depending on how deep you want to go, mm -hmm. uh, plus some side stories. So the the side quest will give you uh, plenty more, and then there is the open world experience, which uh, can give you like uh, even 500 hours, uh, but of course it depends how far you explore. Um, but the, the world is pretty big, and uh, it's uh, even for me it's really easy to get lost in it. <laughs> yeah, there's. I mean, we I saw a little bit of the video. We we're just playing it. I had a chance to play it. Um, we're recording this right as it goes out, so that's um, why I haven't had a chance to really play that much of it. But it's certainly an amazing open world that you've created with with that verticality. To, as your role as the animation director, do you, I mean, I, I assume you just go through all the elements of the player and the NPCs and so forth just to make it seem fluid. Tell us about your role and what that animation director, um, you know, what your day-to-day -day looks like. Right. So um, I am overseeing pretty much all the animation teams uh, at Techland. We have a team that is responsible for narration side and we have team responsible for uh, the gameplay side and some uh, teams that are responsible for, uh, you know, more technical aspects. Uh, and I'm trying to bind them together in communication. Uh, I myself uh, am more on the gameplay side. Uh, so I'm, I'm this kind of uh, a player that, uh, you know, likes to take a pad or, or a mouse and keyboard and, uh, and play and have like pure fun of exploration. Uh, so my, uh, my main area and my favorite area is, is parkour actually. Uh, when we when we looked at the game, we saw a little bit of it in the in the in the, uh, in the video that I was showing, and I'll go ahead and play a little bit more here. We we saw this interesting dynamic of the day night cycle. Tell us about the gameplay and the day night cycle here. Right. So um, in Dying Light One, uh, there was also a game, uh, you know, the day, day and night cycle, but. Uh, night was really uh, terrifying. So mm -hmm. some players uh, came back and said like, uh, well, it's too terrifying. We want to uh, wait until the day comes. Uh, and they, they tried to skip it. Some, some loved it, but uh, uh, overall uh, there was kind of this, uh, you know, imbalance between day and night. So in Dying Light 2, we wanted to uh, fix that and uh, make it more even. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make it more even. So during the day, you have some uh, activities that are uh, easier and like m better to do during the day. And during the night, uh, for example, the, um, the dark zones, uh, the dark places that the um, infected reside in, they are uh, full during the day, uh, but they become empty during the night. So uh, that uh, makes the player actually want to explore during the night. But the traversal through the city is much more difficult be because all of the infected are actually on the streets. Uh, but if you actually get to the uh, dark place, uh, you can explore it uh, much more freely. And the loot there is uh, really rewarding. So uh, that helps uh, in this balance. I noticed I was reading some notes on it, and this in the timeline, this takes place about twenty years after the original Dying Light, yeah. correct? And and the di yeah. the original Dying Light, I mean, that was millions of people played that game, so I can imagine that that you're going to have that much and more with this game. 
But one of the great elements about this is that that I'm very excited about is co-op. Tell us about co-op and how that works. Right. So um, it's similar to Dying Light 1. Like you can uh, get through the game in co-op. Uh, after you finish the first part of the game, the prologue, uh, the uh, you do the first few missions and then you can play uh, in co-op with your, with your friends, with uh, others uh, in uh, online mode. And you can actually finish uh, the game together. Uh, but we believe that it's better to uh, finish the game uh, first in single mode and then get back to it in co-op. Uh, because uh, if you uh, play in co-op, you miss out on the story a little bit. So it's... It's not as great experience in terms of the story, but it's great because you can create your own story because of the vast uh, open world and exploration aspects. I mean, that's one of the funs of playing a co-op game is you go in there with your friends and you just have this massive wide open sandbox. So that's actually an interesting tip is if, you know, if you're for, for Dying Light fans, go through and spend some time and, you know, perhaps go through the single player or, you know, kind of have a single player experience first and then then grab your buddies and come on in and then start wreaking havoc in the in the in the real world or excuse me in, in the game world when when you're when you're playing the game you know what should what what should folks look for you know just to kind of get them started some people are just maybe going to download it for the first time this weekend and get into it um so w- w- would you tell us a little bit about what they should focus on in terms of the skill tree and so forth mm. Yeah, so like try to go balanced uh, because uh, the the skill tree is uh, divided in two branches. Uh, so one is for combat and one is for parkour. Uh, and uh, of course, depending on your play style, if you prefer to uh, avoid combat, uh, then you can invest more in in parkour. Uh, but you will get best of the uh, game experience if you um, think of you know which skill may ha- help you in in which area and of course there is you know uh, a description that that helps you decide that uh, but uh, i personally uh love dropkick <laughs> uh we uh, we have it uh, kept for all the fun uh, of the fans from dying light one who love dropkick so uh, i would go for that first if you have a chance <laughs> uh it's still there don't worry that's good to know. Now, folks, for those of you that you're know, thinking like, wow, have I seen some of this gameplay before or maybe some of the parkour? I went back and checked. It was E3 2018 when we had you at the Xbox conference. So it's it's been a, it's been a little while. And I know that game development takes a long time in this game, especially with a game of this scope. And there's just so much in this game that for folks to and players to enjoy that uh, it's there's going to be a lot to, to, to jump into. Right. It's uh, it's really huge. Uh, for me, it was uh, six years, uh, and uh, you know, all this time was uh, not only to create new content. It was to make sure that the content that we have uh, works uh, better. And like uh, a lot of this time was making sure that the gameplay is is fun. That you know, the enemies that we already have are fun, and uh, you know, we constantly iterated on on the stuff that we had to just to make sure that. Uh, players will will have you know great experience so it's not just you know releasing the game as it is it's just you know trying to make it really good and uh, as good as it can be so uh, in uh, you know at techland we have uh, you know huge al- amount of uh, good players and for us it was also super important that uh, all the players around the world will love it as we love it would you say before I let you go? Would you say that dying, playing the original Dying Light, is required to understand some of the mechanics or the world, or are you, are, or are they okay to jump into Dying Light Two? No, not at all. Uh, it's it's okay to jump into Dying Light Two. The story is different. Uh, the mechanics are revised. Uh, some of them are similar, so uh, you can still uh, like find uh, similarities. Uh, but the parkour is reworked, like uh, pretty much every element is, is reworked. So uh, don't worry if you haven't played the first game, you can start with the second one. And then you can jump into the first one uh, if, you, if you want to see the differences. Uh, but don't worry, it's, it's not a big deal. All right, Dying Light, Stay Human. It's now available on Xbox Series X and X, Xbox One. It's available on PlayStation, Nintendo, and of course, it's available on Windows. Dave Lubrica, the animation director there at Techland for Dying Light 2. Thanks so much for your time. And again, congratulations on the game launch. Thanks for having me and uh, have a great time playing the game. Thanks.